cargo. All right, good morning, everyone. Fernquart High School family, welcome to our online assembly for September 17, 2021. We are on a late start at this time, but as you jolly know that we will start with some music. So here we go. You Make Me Stronger by Kevin Downswell. You make me stronger. Oh, oh, oh. You make me stronger. Gracias, Jesus. Oh, Watch me! Woo! From Jamaica to the Caribbean From Spain to Colombia From Canada to the US Uganda Woo! You're my creator Lord, you know my time Seasons of breakthrough, my seasons of trial. So I will seek you, and you I will find. You're my strong tower, in you I will hide. Help me now.
Mozambique, Malawi, Rwanda, Burundi, Zambia. We're gonna do this in Swahili. Yes, Ufania Mimi and Boo. Amen, amen, indeed. You made me stronger, sung by Kevin Downs Well. This morning, we have a special guest presenter for General Assembly. With humble roots in St. Mary, she was born Lisa Renee Shantihano on August 1975. A karate black belt and instructor. She holds bachelor's and master's degrees in communications from University of the West Indies. She is a director of the Lidford Logistic Group, an agriculture and food processing facility operating as a special economic zone, providing services in third party logistics, farming and agricultural coordination, juice manufacturing, cannabis processing for pharmaceutical use and a state-of-the-art baking facility serving the island's hotel, tourism and food service infrastructure. She is a four-term MP for South East St. Anne from 2007 to present. Current Shadow Minister for Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, a Jamaica Observer newspaper columnist and director. She has one son and is married to Jamaican businessman Richard Blake. It is a privilege and honor for me to welcome our member of parliament to share with us this morning on our General Assembly. Good morning, Ms. Hanno. Hi, good morning, Principal Thomas. Good morning to all of the teachers, all of the staff, past uh, students of the Fern Court High School, current students who are watching this morning. And um, in a very special way, I want to say good morning to the parents who are online, because I know that for many of you, your child being in high school has great memories, great achievements, but it also comes with a significant degree of struggle, especially during this time. But we're here this morning to give joy, to praise God, and to say how happy we are that we are able to see and feel and be a part of a new school term. I want to first of all say thank you to Principal Thomas for inviting me to present to you this morning. It is a distinct honor and a privilege. I value Fern Court distinctly because not only has it given this nation stellar Jamaicans across the world who achieve in different spheres of their work, but it, has hold, it is also a beacon for my constituency as one of the pioneering high schools that you know, gives us a tremendous amount of help, community service, and quite recently, some athletic stars that we're looking forward to seeing on the world stage and also cultural stars that um, I know are going to do well. This morning, I've been asked to address you on reimagining education. And during this time of, what would I call it? I would call it uncertainty with hope because unfortunately, Latin America and the Caribbean as recent study came out, which says three out of every five students in this region have lost one year of school. 
And for our country and for students, losing a year of school at a time when education is so important is not a very good statistic to be a part of. And so what is it that we're thinking? And I know many of you as students and as parents are trying to figure out how to maneuver this new journey, this new mind field, this new reality, which no longer, necess- no longer has face-to-face all the time, but you now have to adapt and adapt to technology. And we are behind as a country where that is concerned, not only in terms of the technology and the broadband, but for rural areas like my constituency, especially when I go up into places like Nine Mile, as I did yesterday, you recognize how difficult it is for parents, especially with more than one child who are perhaps not working to be able to afford the tool that students now have to use for learning. You know, when I started out as member of parliament, it was about giving book vouchers. No, it is, you can put all the books on one tablet. And so we have to identify together how we're going to solve this, this, these kinds of problems um, so that we can have our students learn. So in reimagining education, we have to first of all start off from the perspective and from the conclusion that education is a pathway to success. For many, it is the only pathway to make sure that you move yourselves from the positions that you're in to where you want to get to. And so now we can't disregard that it is important to learn. Can't disregard that because of the circumstances that you're just not going to go to school. As a member of parliament, I have to ensure that we give students and parents as many as we can the tools so that children are not caught behind. The second thing that we have to be able to do is to make sure that in the communities, if parents are feeling frustrated, feeling destabilized and feeling stressed, which many mothers are now because many have lost their jobs due to the the tourism followed and many farmers that we have no longer have access to markets for crops because of the, the whole downturn that we give them an opportunity to boost not only their spirits, but to assist them. So we need more community volunteers going into communities to find out if students are able to access the the information online, if they have bad Wi-Fi, or if parents just need additional support, especially if they have more than one child between the ages of, let us say, one is at basic school, one is at primary school, and one is at high school, and you only have one device for that child to go to school. I was with a mother yesterday, and she said, look, you know, I have one child who goes to school one week, and another child who goes to school the following week, and then in the middle of that, I have to be able to use my phone. The third thing we have to do is we have to fast track how we are going to get areas, especially with bad Wi-Fi and and that broadband to come up to speed because this is the new reality. I don't believe it is going to go back fully to how we once knew it because at various times we're going to have to, you know, rely on the technology. And that's not a bad thing because many of you as students would have been telling parents like me that we needed to get here because you could go to school online You could do a number of things online. You never have to carry all of the books in your bag. You could put all the books online. So in reimagining education, we have to be able to do it together. We have to work as student leadership and community. And so what are some of the things that we have been doing as the leadership of your constituency to make sure that these things happen? Well, we've gotten the Universal Access Fund to come in and we have now are, we're, we're now completing the upgrading of the Claremont Library and the Monique Library with universal Wi-Fi. And we're hoping to extend that even a little further in the community so that people can pick it up. So that students can go to these facilities 
we now have computers, upgraded systems at both locations to be able to access that. And I just spoke with Minister Daryl Vaz, who has assured me that we're about to complete that. The other thing that we're doing is that we're putting, we've gotten proposals from ReadyNet and we're going to install other universal um, Wi-Fi hotspots around the constituency. So hopefully in another couple of months, maybe in the next three months, we would be able to have those facilities ready. And also, you know, making sure that those persons who are in need of tablets um, and other technolo technological devices have access to those. And on the, that point, I want to say to um, Mr. Thomas that I'm personally donating 10 tablets to Fern Court to students who are vulnerable. And so I will allow you that opportunity um, in your own space and time to determine who those are. And I will talk to you off the air about how, how to give those. The other things that we have to be doing is identifying volunteers. And we, we provide free classes um, at my office for remedial classes, I should say, um, to, to scores of students free of cost in math, English, social studies, so that students can get that remedial offering. But we also have, we need more volunteers to go into the communities because a lot of, the, a lot of parents don't have the wherewithal or even the patients trying to, at this point, trying to find out how they're going to put the next meal on their table to be assisting students with this new educational curriculum and making students, sure students pay attention. So we're now looking to put together cadre of volunteers who are able to say to me, MP, this area, we have to, to make sure that even if we can give three hours a day to this particular area, and we're looking for whether it's teachers or, or young um, university students who can assist with that across the constituency. And then the third thing in terms of reimagining it is, is, is talking to our students because they actually have the answers and some of the better answers as to how they would like to, to see themselves on this new frontier. Because what this also does is it makes you compete with the rest of the world. No longer are Jamaican students only competing in Jamaica. Jamaican students know it's a level playing field because the whole world is globally competitive. And so the top 10 in-demand jobs that existed 10 years ago do not exist today. And as teachers, you also have to recognize that in your, in, in your dissemination of information and in how you impart knowledge, you have to be very clear about the narrative and the signals that you're sending to these young minds that will direct them in a particular way. And so the jobs that will become available are in healthcare, are in technology, in farming, and so even the career days and the persons that you're inviting to speak to them must be aware that we are shaping the next generation of power. So in, in the reimagining of education as well, we have to be preparing Jamaica and the world for one, those persons who are going to be leading our country in the next 10, 15, 20 years, and the other thing that we have to do is that we have to prepare students to go onto the world stage, to give and to, to, to recognize that there are other spaces that will require their help at some point in their lives. And Fern Court has to be that beacon that also does that. So it is going to require persistence. It is going to require hard work. It is going to require coordination. It is going to require co cooperation. It is going to require us all coming together, Mr. Thomas, like we've never done before, persistently making sure that we grab every student to, to make sure that they don't lag behind. We don't want another situation like last year where we are not clear on the students who are falling through the cracks. We have to be able to provide the help. And so I'm here to say to you, that as always, I stand ready to assist Fern Court and the students and the teachers and whatever I can do to help in this reimagining process. We have to go up there, we have to get the technology, maybe the new multipurpose rooms and make sure that we, we show Fern Court and this constituency as an example. Um, 
The final thing I would like to say is to the students. Now is not the time to give up. Now is not the time that you are to waste the time. Now is the time to think differently. Now is the time that all of these thoughts that you've had about creativity and different career paths that you might, may have thought about that weren't possible, now is the time to explore them with your teachers. This is a time actually of great hope. It's not a time of despair. One of the things that you have to recognize is that people are looking for young people with not only academics, but with brilliant attitudes, with a, what we call an effervescence, a, 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 a bursting of energy to want to find solutions. And so in all things, we have to be solution driven. Please do not give up and say, well, not now, go on, so we can't bother. That's not the attitude that we need now. At every cycle in our history, there have been moments of uncertainty like this where the world has to recalibrate and at this moment, in that recalibration, that resetting, when you press the reset button, this is a time that we all come together and find solutions. So they say every crisis is an opportunity for a breakthrough. Let this be your breakthrough. I'm available to you to talk, to match out things. We can organize things to find solutions for your lives. So on that note, I say, listen, Let's make 2021, 2022 your best academic year, whether you're in first form or sixth form at Fern Court. And let us make sure that we give you the tools that you can reimagine education with persistence and tenacity. Thank you all so much. And I wish you a very productive day. God bless you all and God bless Fern Court. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Sano, for giving us some actual information this morning as we continue to re-imaging education here in our current court, right? You remind us that it's not time for us to give up, but we must focus. You also reminded our students that talking about careers, since we are competing with all persons around the world, we have to rethink of the career choices that we do to ensure that we're able to survive moving out of front court. You also tell us not to give up. And as teachers, I know at times we have it rough parents to one student, but you are reminded us this morning not to give up. So thank you for sharing with us this morning. You're welcome, Mr. Thomas, anytime. All right, thank you. Have a good day. You too, thank you. All right, so persons on the platform, I'm going to ask Mr. Jackson to lead us in prayer. All right, Mr. Jato seem not to be on. All right, Ms. Burnett from our admin staff, are you on? Yes, sir, I'm here. All right, good, good. Can you lead us in prayer? Okay, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to be in this virtual space to connect with others and with you. Lord, as we reimagine education, I pray that you give us the mindset to go with the flow, so to speak to go with the times and to see how best we can make use of this opportunity. Lord, as we continue throughout this day, I pray that you'll bless the teachers, the staff members and students and parents, that we'll be able to do what needs to be done today in the name and of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray giving thanks, amen. And thank you, Ms. Burnett, one of our members of the administrative staff here at Fernport High School. This morning, it's a Friday, it's now 8.36, it's almost in the first session, so I'm not gonna take much time. 
but we have come to the end of another week. It's good that we can all come together in a virtual platform so that we can continue to have our general assembly, which was a special one this morning as at times we are going to be inviting other persons to come and to give us some updates so that we look at certain topics and they give their perspectives so that we can have a better understanding of what is happening so that we are more informed as a school as we move forward. So at times we will change the approach as we deal with General Assembly because last week, Friday, for example, with the HFLE team would have done a session as it relates to World Prevention Suicide Day. So every Friday, we'll be looking at certain topics. I will invite persons to come in to share their thoughts so that we can continue to re-imaging education. Next week, Tuesday, next Tuesday, we're asking persons to wear blue as we celebrate International Peace Day. So we're asking person next Tuesday to wear blue as we celebrate right here at Front Court High School International Peace Day. So colleagues here on the Zoom platform, parents, students on well wishes of Front Court on the YouTube channel. It's an honor privilege that you could come together again. And I have a special presenter, Monday Vibes One, or one of a popular person, I'm not going to tell the name. So you have to join us on Monday at 8 a.m. for General Assembly. Let's get ready for the playing of the national anthem. God us with thy mighty hand Keep us free from evil powers Be our light through countless hours To our leaders, great defender Grant true from above, justice, truth be ours forever. Jamaica, land we love. Jamaica, Jamaica. Duty's call, strengthen us the weak to change. Give us vision lest we perish. Knowledge sent us, Heavenly Father, grant true wisdom. From above, justice to be us forever, Jamaica, land we love, Jamaica.
have a wonderful day, everyone. See you back here on Monday where we do it all over again for you.